I'm really excited about this new project I've got in the works. It's a course slash membership site to help you sell more of your online courses. And in the process, I had to decide where to host it. So today, let's talk about what went into this big decision in case it's helpful for you. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Course Creators HQ podcast, helping you navigate the latest techniques for creating and marketing online courses. And now, here is your host, Julie Hood. So welcome to episode 89 of the Course Creators HQ podcast. I can't believe we've made it this far, <laughs> but this is going to be a really fun discussion today. I want to talk about the decision I made about where to host my next course slash membership site. And there's actually a lot of details in this episode, so I want you to sort of understand the overall goal here is what went into my decision and how I decided what I did in case it's helpful for you. But I also want to mention that I have an entire free a mini course that you can get to help you walk you through the decision about where to host your online course. So you can either go to the show notes at coursecreatorshq.com slash 89 or just go directly to the mini course at coursecreatorshq.com slash host your course. So that'll give you some more information, but let's jump into some of the details about what happened and how I made this choice. You might not know this, but I actually spend hours and hours and hours and hours researching all of this stuff, partly because I just love to do that. It's it's like a passion of mine of figuring out some of these things. Also because it's super, super helpful for you as a listener and for my coaching and my students when I can share some of the best resources that are out there. And I've looked at so many of them that I can give you kind of that broad perspective. It's not that I just look at one thing and say, this is what you should do. I'm always on the hunt to try to get a bigger picture. So for example, this week I'm hunting for LinkedIn experts and resources that I can share with you. And I found some really good ones. I'm excited about that. I'm also looking at an expert on Facebook ads and what he offers and test driving his next program to see if it's going to be worth sharing with you. I'm also looking at several more email list building methods. I'm always, always, always on the hunt for that because I want you to be building your email list plus a bunch of new organization tools. So lots and lots of stuff in the works and it's just sort of how I spend my time because I enjoy it. But related to that then is I have been researching the best place to put this new membership site. It's actually more of a membership than it is a um, uh, course. So just so you know that that's a little bit part of the decision here is a big piece of this is going to be the membership pieces of it. And so when I initially started getting organized and putting together my thoughts of, okay, what is this going to look like? I was looking at using WordPress and here's why. I, there's several reasons. I've been using WordPress since 2005 when we taught the one of the first courses on blogging with WordPress. I think there were only four or five people in it, but <laughs> I, I saw the power of WordPress at that point. And um, here's a few of the reasons that I really love WordPress. It's really easy to get consistent looking pages. You set it up with a theme and then the pages across your website have the same headers and the same footers. And that was a big innovation at the time. And I also think it's a really great feature for people so that your site can look consistent. It also can be really set up well for doing search engine optimization. So Google has loved WordPress sites for years and you can do some, add some functionality to make it work really well for that. 
Number three is the flexibility. You can design your WordPress site pretty much any way you want it. And that has really expanded in the last few years to give you this. It, it used to be WordPress sites looked very similar, but now there's uh, some incredible ways to design them. So there's a lot of flexibility in how it looks and how it's set up. There's also some really fantastic plugins that can do all kinds of wonderful things for your website. And for example, the big piece that I was looking for was gamification. So I wanted to have this site be a place where every time you visited and did things and worked with things, you got points and we had a leaderboard of who was the most active. And that was pretty high on the priority list and I couldn't find too many good places to do that. Plus I already host WordPress sites. So, and I've been doing that for years and years and years. So I do know what's involved. I've got them already. So it wouldn't be an additional cost from the hosting side of things. It would just be additional cost if I decided to buy any more extras, which I did. I actually purchased um, a couple extra themes that I wanted to use for this site. And then I got to thinking about it and I realized that there could be some issues. And here's the piece that I want to make sure that you know when you're going to use WordPress, some things that you know about that you can manage, but I don't think it's generally mentioned as much as it should be. <laughs> um, and these are the things that just kind of drive me nuts about WordPress. <laughs> so it's a constant, never ending upgrade scheme. <laughs> so I'm constantly having to either upgrade the core WordPress system or the themes, or the plugins. And because of that, when you don't update that, it creates a lot of risks of your website getting hacked. And um, right now, and part of the reason for that, I just looked this up, Search Engine Journal said that WordPress powers 40% of all websites. So because it's so popular, that makes for two great things. One piece of it is there's lots of resources and lots of experts and lots of cool things that you can do with it. <laughs> the bad side of that is it's also become a big target for hackers. And there, because of that, you have to really be on top of your security. And what really sort of pushed me over the edge on why I dumped WordPress for this new site is I, I'm on a couple email lists to, to watch some of the vulnerabilities with WordPress because I have it for my other websites. And I got one that had a list of 20 different problems. <laughs> and this was just one email. And I thought, you know what? I don't really want to have this, to deal with this for this new website. Uh, and then the second piece of working with WordPress that I don't think people mention a lot is this server software, kind of the underlying software underneath WordPress also has to be upgraded. And these are the technical side of this is MySQL, PHP, sometimes it's cPanel. All of those things have to be kept upgraded too. And I've had clients bring me in and that whole process can be a little bit challenging to get all of that right and make sure everything's going to work. So uh, you can do take care of some of this when you get managed WordPress hosting. Then what happens is you've got a team of people who are managing your WordPress for you and they're dealing with all these upgrades and helping um, with some of the security. And so because of that, if you're going to go the WordPress route, don't go the cheap WordPress hosting. Get managed WordPress hosting to help avoid some of these problems. And because WordPress can be so easily hacked and also really difficult to get rid of the hacking, <laughs> it can be expensive to have somebody clean out your site once it's been infected with something. So I, I'm, I don't want to tell you not to use WordPress. I just want you to be aware that if you're going to do it, be prepared to have managed hosting and that will, will prevent a lot of these issues. Also make sure you have a lot of backups. 
so that if something happens, you can just revert to one of your backups. So it can be managed. It's just whether or not you want to deal with all of the headaches around it. And I decided for this new website that I'm doing, I was like, you know, I just don't want to have to deal with all of the management of the site to make this happen. The other piece of it for me is I have a ton of really fantastic tools that I'm already paying for. So why not use them and put this into one of the tools that I'm already paying for? I won't have to pay any extra won't have to do any additional um, worries about security. So I'm using Kajabi for the new site. And I'm also using a really incredible tool that I have called Searchy, which lets me create a place where you can search across the resources. So I wanted a universal search because this is going to be a membership site and there's going to be a lot of content in it. I wanted you to be able to go in there and enter, let's say, how to send email and get the resources related to email marketing. So I'm going to use Searchy to help with that. And, um, so those two pieces, plus I already have my email newsletter and all of those kinds of tools. So because I already have those, I decided, you know what, that's going to be a lot easier, a, probably a lot better for my students. The one piece of the puzzle that I did lose was the gamification. And I'm hoping I'm sent in requests. I've got my fingers crossed <laughs> that Kajabi will eventually add that piece to the puzzle because I think it can be really, really helpful for your students and, and motivating to help them get through the content and to, to work with you. So I just wanted to give you this kind of overview of the whole WordPress scenario should I use WordPress or shouldn't I? <laughs> and I decided not to, <laughs> I'll be honest. So I hope that's somewhat helpful for you as you're thinking through it. I, there's a lot more to picking out where to host your course. So I hope you go get my mini course, coursecreatorshq.com slash host your course. And that will talk you through some of the questions that you should ask. Because I don't believe that there's a one-size-fits-all solution for everyone. I think depending on where you're at and your budget and how much control you want to have over how things look, that can also be another great reason to use WordPress if you really have a specific layout in mind that you want Um that more WordPress is one of the most flexible course hosting places for doing that. And if you have questions, you know, just come over to Facebook or Instagram, message me, and I'll try to sort of point you in the right direction of what to think about if there's other pieces of the puzzle that you're missing. But I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes kind of look at how I went down the rabbit hole, went into the whole WordPress choice, and then backtracked and changed my mind <laughs> and decided that, that maybe wasn't the best place for this new tool that I'm working on. So have a fantastic week. Take care. And I can't wait to see your new courses live and up and running. So send them over and let me know how it's going. Take care and I will catch you on the next episode.